Today, let's learn how to make the purl stitch. Today, we're working on the purl stitch. When combined with the knit stitch, you can get a beautiful stock and knit stitch. What does that mean? Well, it is a stitch that looks like this, where the right side or front side has all knit stitches. They look like these bunch of V marks here, these V stitches. And then on the back, the reverse is called the wrong side, and this is where all of the purl stitches are. Now, you can make this in combination with with other stitch patterns and do things like uh, have the middle part of the, what we call the field with all V-shaped stitches, those knit stitches, and have borders and garter stitch, uh, the stitch that you learned in our last lesson, or you can just keep it something like this and it will curl and roll. So we'll learn more about this stitch today. And welcome to our series. We're in lesson two of how to knit for the complete beginner. Of course, this is how to purl the stock and net stitch. If you're joining us for the first time, know that we have a right and left-handed video for this one. You can click for old videos down in the description below, as well as click on timestamps. We also have on closed captions, so you can turn that on or off, whether you wanna to listen to me, yammer on, or you just want to read across the screen for the prompts. We're gonna start with learning how to make the stitch on an existing sample, and then if you'll keep going, you'll see me start it by casting on. I'll get you set up to make it in a stock and net, and we're also going to cast off together as well, so it's all in the same lesson for you today. I hope that you enjoy this video, you give yourself some grace, you can do this. Once you learn how to knit stitch and purl stitch, you really can do anything in the knitting world. That's all you need. I can't wait to show you. Let's get started. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. I'm beginning with a swatch that's already been started and I've casted on 12 stitches and worked my stockinette stitch where I'm knitting on what's called the right side and then I'm purling what's on the wrong side. Now in order to keep track you can use a locking stitch marker and you can lock uh, onto the front side or uh, right side of these stitches. Uh, just remember which side is which and um, I'll do that when I show you uh, starting this from the beginning. But for now, let's begin with just doing the purl stitch. So uh, let me remind you about the knit stitch. When you're going in between these two stitches, you're going in uh, the first stitch from this direction and then you have your yarn in the back and then you wrap around your needle for the yarn over and then make that new stitch. For the purl, you're just going to enter in from the opposite direction of this first stitch. So we're just going in from the front side. And later on, when you have other patterns, you might hear something called slip a stitch purlwise or something purlwise. And that just means to put the needle in this direction here. So we're going to purl. So we're going in purlwise into that stitch. And then you can hold it with your other hand over here just for a moment. You're going to pick up your yarn. Make sure the yarn is in front. So if it was already in back and you're on this edge stitch, it should be easier just to pull it right here. But you can also put it in front before you put that stitch in or before you put that needle in. So let's go ahead and insert our needle. We're going to hold on to it with this other hand over here. It may feel weird, weird at first, but that's okay. Just watch first and then you'll um, be able to do it on your own and slow it down. So take this yarn and we're going to wrap it around our working needle, this free one. We're gonna go all the way around. You can go in between the tips first and go around that needle and then come back again. And that's just making that new loop, which will be uh, your next stitch. You're gonna push it through the old one, just like this, and then you let it fall off your needle. You can guide it or you can pull it, okay? And of course that's way, <laughs> way loose, but I'm just trying to over-exaggerate and show you what that looks like. Okay, so now the yarn is already in front. We're just gonna keep it in front and we're gonna put our, our needle in purlwise, this next stitch, and then holding on to those two needles, we can take our yarn and yarn over. You're going around this needle, you go in between the two tips first, so that way, and then go around like a little lasso and put it on, around our new needle and then we're gonna push it on through you can call it pull it through this stitch here. So it's just coming right on through and then pull it off. And now we've made our second stitch and you can see that little scarf around the back of someone's head sort of look, that's the purl stitch. And then on the opposite side, it looks like the knit stitch. So it's nice and flat and smooth. All right, let's do that again. The yarn is in front. I'm gonna put our needle in purl wise 
yarn over and push it through and then pull off the old. Again, insert the needle purlwise, yarn over and push through the new, pull off the old. Insert the needle purlwise, yarn over, push it through. Okay. Be sure and use your tips of your needles as the guide. You can push them against the other needle to ensure that you do not get the new yarn um, falling off of the needle. So watch what I do here. We're going to put that needle in purlwise, hold on to it with your other hand, yarn over, and then as I'm pulling on this one, I'm giving it some tightness, and then I'm going to push my tip into this other needle. I'm push it onto it really nice, and then it doesn't give it any uh, way that this other uh, stitch can fall through, okay, because I'm pushing on and guiding it through, and then we let that one fall off, okay? All right, so you're just going to continue through your row, and that gives you a purl stitch. Okay, now you don't have to worry about how you hold this yarn. Um, some people hold it up like this and flick it around. Some people drop it and work it around like this. Uh, sometimes I um, sort of guide it around. I got it around like this. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to um, hold on to it a, a particular type of way. So just yarn over and push it on through. And I'm just giving a little bit of attention with my thumb. And then we move on. Okay. So um, let's begin our swatch. In this next moment, I'm going to show you how to cast on one more time. And we'll set up this stockinette sample. So we're going to go ahead and cast on. You've got your super bulky uh, weight yarn. This is a six weight, or you can use chunky. And we have our US 15 or 10 millimeter needles. And of course, you can use the smaller needles. I'm going to cast on 12 stitches. And if you're using the smaller needles and yarn, you can cast on 24. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out uh, my length. If you remember from our last uh, video, we pull out for the long tail cast on about three times the width that we need uh, for our sample. So I'm going to pull out uh, about 18 inches or so and leave enough for a tail. And I've already put a slip knot on here just to mark where I was going to do it. Uh, let's do a slip knot again. And by the way, I've got a few stitch markers here. I just wanted to show you locking stitch markers. We talked about it in the overview video, but if you have one of these, you can use that on this tutorial. It's very appropriate and I'll show you why in a moment. So let's go ahead and pull out our tail, put in a slip knot. I'm just gonna wrap it around my finger twice, take the back loop over the front loop, and then do it one more time up and over the tip of your finger, just like that. And again, you do not have to use a slip knot, but here I'm just gonna show you. So we're gonna put in our needle, and we put the tail part towards us and the ball part to the back, and just go ahead and tug on that. Make sure that it's not too tight, uh, it's going to be able to slip but not fall off when we dip our needle down like that. Okay, so we're going to grab our yarn with our hand, separate it with our finger and our thumb, and pull back like a slingshot. And again, this lower tutorial is down in Lesson 1. Uh, click in the video description and you can see that. So we're going to hold on to our uh, stitch that's on our needle with our finger and Take the tip of your needle and dip it underneath your thumb. Go around at the finger and go through that loop at the finger. And you're picking up this yarn. And then we're going to go down through the middle of where our thumb is here. And then I'm going to, before I let go, I'm going to put my finger kind of towards the back of the stitch and over a little bit. So the fingertip of mine is going to give this stitch some space. Go ahead and let go with your thumb and pull on that tail. Okay, and now we've tightened that up a little bit and we're ready for our next stitch. Okay, so again, we're grabbing that yarn. You don't have to let go of it, but if you let go, I'm just showing it to you again. Grab your yarn, the tail is towards you, the ball is at the back, split it, pull back. I'm gonna try a different position here so you can see that. We're gonna go up through the thumb, 
we're going to go down at the finger and down at the thumb and let go. Okay, we'll do that again. I'm going to go ahead and put my spacing in here now where I put my finger in front of that last stitch we did to give us some space. Okay, we're going to go pull up at the thumb, down at the finger, and down at the thumb, and let go and pull up. Okay, one more time. Let's grab our yarn, split it, put our finger to give some spacing, go up at the thumb, down at the finger, down at the thumb, let go. You can just slide that on over. Okay, so uh, you're just going to continue casting on your stitches, 12 for the larger yarn and needles and 24 for the smaller. When you get to that number, uh, we'll meet you back up and we'll start on row one. See you in a moment. Okay, so you've casted on your stitches, they're evenly spaced out, and you have that smooth casted on edge. So we're going to turn our work over, and you see the bumpy uh, edge here for the cast on. So I, what I like to do when I'm making stockinette, I want the purl row to match up on this bumpy row. If your pattern calls for the first row to be knit when you start working patterns later on, that's okay. Uh, but uh, I'm choosing to make my first row in purl. You can choose and to make yours different. But when we work in stock and knit, one side is always going to be knit and one side is always going to be purl. And you can make that choice which one comes first. Okay, so uh, just to review what we did earlier in the video. We are putting our needle into this first stitch from this direction. We're going to, um, well, first of all, let me pull my tail and hide it out of the way so you're not really seeing that one. You're going to make sure you're working with the yarn coming from the ball. This is our working yarn. And we're going to wrap it around that free needle. And then we're just pushing that new yarn through that old stitch. And then we pull it off of the old needle. Just slide it down. And there it goes. Okay, let's do that again. Put the uh, needle into that first stitch. Hold on to it with the other hand, yarn over, you're going between where these two uh, tips or points on the needle are, you're going around that needle that's on top, this one here, and then you've made your uh, yarn that makes the stitch, but you've got to push it through, okay, so we're pushing it all the way through, and there it is, and we'll pull it right off, okay? Let's do a couple more, and I'm going to show you how to fix mistakes and the easy mistakes that you can make and how you would fix those with the purl stitch. Put our needle in, yarn over, all the way around that needle, and push it on through to make that loop. One more time, needle in, hold your needles, yarn over, push it through, pull the old one off. Okay, now if you need to undo that stitch, uh, unknit it or unpurl it, you're just going to take your other needle and put it in. Uh, you're going to put it into this bump here. See this bump here? You're just lifting your working yarn up, put your needle in, okay, and then you can just slide it off of that working needle and pull it out. Okay, pretty simple. Okay, so one of the things that you can also do is say you um, accidentally start wanting to uh, knit again and you didn't want to knit and you accidentally <laughs> did that. Um, maybe you went directly in and then knit around like this and what happens is you come up with this extra stitch okay that's a yarn over you don't need to do that here and we'll go over that in our increases video but for now you need to undo this stitch to get it back so we're just going to insert a needle into that knit stitch pull this one out and you can see that yarn that's right there just make sure to um, move the yarn forward and then make your purl stitch if you were going to do a combination of knits and purls within the row, you actually put that yarn to the back between these two needles here. We'll do that in another video, actually one coming up, but for now, leave that yarn forward for the purl stitch. Okay, go ahead and insert your needle in there and yarn over and pull through or push through that stitch, drop the old off, and you've got that stitch. Okay, so you're just going to continue working across. I'm going to do a couple more and see if I can get a mistake one to show you again. So let's see. If I knit this one and I don't drop it, 
Okay, let's see. Here's another one. Uh, so it looks like a weird bulky stitch here. You can play with this and kind of try and finish knitting it over and see if that will work or when in doubt if it's all combined and everything you can just search and use your um, needle and try and find the last stitch and undo it like that okay all right so it's just a matter of reading your knitting really looking closely and finding out where that working yarn is coming from okay so that's it just keep going and um, pause your video. I will see you at the end of this row and we'll work on the right side. And I'll show you what to do with that stitch marker. We'll see you in a moment. All right, so we have finished working our row one. You can see all of our pearl bumps here. When we turn it over, you can see the knit stitch down below. Just pull that back and you see all the V-shaped knit stitches. So now we're on what we call the right side and we can just mark that with the stitch marker so pull back your work and you're just going to put a stitch marker on one of these stitches. I'm going to pick up this one and it's a locking stitch marker. This one looks like a safety pin, but it's made to where it doesn't have that extra little wire wrapping around it and your yarn doesn't get caught. Just uh, find a stitch. You can just go through one part of it and then lock it. There we go. And let it hang. And every time you're on this side, where you see that stitch marker you know that you're going to knit so let's go ahead and pick up our knitting we're going to work that first stitch knit stitch next one go into that stitch yarn over pull through knock that one off there's your knit stitch so you just continue on that row again if you need a reminder video go click for lesson one and you'll see those. I'm going to get through here and we'll go on to our purl stitch. And just a little tip, so the stockinette stitch is also called the stocking stitch and it's also called the jersey knit stitch. Now and that's in some parts of the United Kingdom, I've seen it in some patterns, uh, but primarily it's stockinette or stocking stitch and it rolls and curls. You can see it start to curl right here and if you've ever seen um, women's um, stockings or um, pantyhose or something those are uh, those are something like if they get cut they roll down uh, and that's a classic sign of uh, stockinette so the classic stockinette is seeing it with this v-shaped stitch on one side but you can also have something called reverse stockinette which is if you were featuring all pearl stitches on the right side of your pattern so uh, either one of these is really just the stockinette stitch or reverse stockinette it just depends on which side you're calling the right side and where you put your stitch marker okay so we're back on a pearl row and you're going to go ahead and purl that row putting your needle in yarning over pushing it through to the back and pulling the old off okay so you're just going to continue purling until you reach your desired length you can do uh, about 24 rows or so and you can bind off either on the right side or the wrong side it doesn't matter uh, I'm going to show you uh, binding off on the right side so you're going to finish a purl row and and we'll bind off in that direction again all right we'll see you in just a moment pause your video and I'll see you then so if you had done the 24 rows you have about twice as long as what I have here I actually have 12 done and because I started my row one on uh, actually on this side over here I'm going to end with my uh, row uh, 24 uh, finishing on a right side row okay so then I'm ready to bind off on the purl side you can do 24 rows or 25 it doesn't matter and test either one of these uh, but I'm going to talk to you about binding off in pattern so if you want to end on row uh, 24 like I have here we're actually going to do the bind off uh, in purl in pattern or you can bind off on the uh, knit row here and do either 23 or 24 rows okay so I'm shorter on this side but just a reminder when we did our bind off in our last video uh, we just knit the first two stitches and then we pass the first stitch over the second 
just like this. And then we moved on to knitting the next stitch and passed that first stitch over the second and continued on. Okay, so the same thing happens or similar thing happens with uh, binding off in pattern. You are following whatever the next stitch would be in the pattern that's continuing on. So if we were uh, continuing to make a purl row, we would go ahead and do purls as our instead of our knit stitch. So uh, here is how we would bind off on this side of our sample. We would purl the first stitch and then we purl the next stitch and then we're going to lift the first stitch over the second stitch. Now um, sometimes it's harder to manage with this extra yarn here. You can lift the first stitch up and over this needle but uh, a lot of times, I know it's strange, but <laughs> I still like to put my yarn in the back when I'm doing this part because it gives me something to kind of pull back on and gives me a little bit more stab stability on this needle here. So I'm going to lift up and over. We're just passing the stitch over. It's not actually knitting it. It's just passing that first stitch over the second and binding it off. Okay. Then I still have to move my yarn to the front. So if it confuses you in trying to make the next stitch uh, purl, then just always leave this yarn in front. It's not a big deal, it's just your own personal preference. So the next stitch I'm going to purl because you can see it's a purl stitch. Just going to yarn over, push that on through as a purl, and then we're gonna lift up and over that first stitch over the second, just like that, okay? And so you are binding off in pattern. What happens is this uh, stitch at the top, this um, uh, chain that's up here, it tilts to the back or to the front depending upon if you are on the uh, correct side for your stitch. So let's look at this right here. So it's going to make this bind off appear nice and flat and this one will appear nice and flat. Uh, but if I change this up and knit this, let's see what this looks like. If I knit this, I'll show you how it changes the look. Look at this. It puts a bump on the front and it was nice and smooth before, kind of like this. Okay, so you can see how um, changing the bind off and to do in pattern and follow your knitting, how that can be um, uh, advantageous to make it in a certain a look. Uh, when you're completing your sample or your knitting project. So I've jumped to where I've already got it down to the last two stitches for our bind off. I'm going to work that very last stitch and we're purling it here or like I said you can knit on that right side and you're just going to work over that last stitch. Okay. And then you're going to trim your yarn. I'm already at the end there and just pull that on through. And then you're just going to use your um, tapestry needle and weave in the tails and you can weave them in just like I did on the first lesson video. So be sure and click down links below. So go ahead and pause and work that bind off. Weave in your tails. Uh, it's It looks a little bit different than the uh, ridge, the garter stitch ridge when you're weaving your tails, but it still has that smile and frown or um, smile and umbrella look to the stitches here and it works in beautifully. And you can see how it's got this nice clean edge up here for the bind off.
Well, how are you feeling about your purl stitch? Well, I'll tell you, I really struggled when I first learned and it took me a while. In fact, I taught myself, I really don't know how, but I taught myself how to knit backwards so that I could cheat and not do the purl stitch. So hopefully I have helped you more than I helped myself back in those days. And uh, I just want you to get this stocking knit stitch down and purl. So there is no assignment this week other than making a few swatches. You can keep going if you want to make uh, a scarf out of this thing you can just remember that it is going to curl next week we're going to be working on adding borders so this little sample right here is what we're going to make we're going to make a washcloth for you and you can learn how to make borders uh, at the top and bottom and the sides and this is also the kind of thing that will get you started when you want to make say a blanket or something so you can make something small you can make something really large and that's going to be on our next lesson so stay tuned for that if you're not subscribed please go ahead and do that and subscribe to our newsletter because we will uh, come out with uh, an email for you to let you know when the next lesson is available just in case you missed it on the subscription to YouTube. I can't wait to see your samples. Be sure and check in with me down below and let me know how you're doing. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.